Let's go through a basic setup with the RTK torch. First thing we're going to do is press and hold the power button until we hear a beep. And we know we're good to go. Next step is extending the pole to approximately 1.8 meters. Uh, this is specific for tilt compensation, um, but can be um, changed in software if you so desire. The next step is to connect over Bluetooth. Uh, in this case, we're using an Android phone and we're gonna pair to the Torch Rover, showing a MAC address as well. And we're gonna give it access. And then we're gonna switch over to our kind of our favorite software here, which is SW Maps. You can use any GIS software you'd like that supports Bluetooth. For us, uh, we really like just the ease of use and sort of, um, it's a really good piece of software. We're gonna connect over Bluetooth to that torch. Uh, we're going to enter in our 1.8 meters, uh, that is our stick length, and uh, we're gonna connect. Now we can see that we've got uh, a single fix and we can see ourselves on the map. And the next step is gonna be uh, to feed it correction. So we're going to connect to the SparkFun base station. We're outside the SparkFun building right now. And we've got a base station set up on that roof. So now we're gonna pull those corrections down over the internet. We're going to pass those from my phone over Bluetooth to the device. And we should see here in a few seconds, um, the change from what is considered um, an RTK float to RTK fix. So you start out in just regular 3D fix, and then as you begin to feed it corrections, uh, it gets better and better. So here we've got an RTK fix. Our latitude, uh, our horizontal accuracy is about 12 millimeter. Our vertical accuracy is 22 millimeter. Now, if we look at what that looks like on the map, you can see that our relative position on the manhole cover versus what we see on Google imagery is a little bit off. That's because the imagery that Google creates is, it doesn't exactly align with reality. They're very close, but it's not complete. Uh, but you can see that green dot on the map showing us the, uh, the, uh, the RTK fix. Now, if we begin to, begin to rock the pole back and forth, you can see the dot on the map move. And that is our eight to 12 millimeter accuracy. Um, what I'd like to demonstrate today is uh, tilt compensation. So the first uh, thing that we gotta do to get it into tilt, and we're gonna try to listen here, is a quick movement of the pole. We're gonna listen for the beeper to go off. That's step one. We've said, hey, we want to go to tilt compensation mode. Now, the next thing we need to do is, is calibrate it. So we're going to rock back and forth on that point to let the internal IMU know sort of that we uh, are this long of a pole and that we are above this point. And we should hear a second beep when that calibration is complete. There we go. Now we are in tilt compensation mode. Now, what does that look like? Um, from the map, before when we tilted the rod back and forth, we could see the dot move. Now it's gonna be really boring because check this out. The dot doesn't move. That's because from the map, we can see not where the receiver is, but where the point of our stick is. So let's say that we needed to measure a point up against a wall or a bush or some other artifact where we couldn't get totally vertical. Um, we can use tilt compensation to detect with great accuracy where that point is. You can hear the device beeping every 10 seconds. That's letting us know that it's still in tilt compensation mode. And if we ever want to get out, we just press the button once and we drop out of tilt compensation mode. To demonstrate the accuracy of the tilt compensation, we're gonna take a series of points on the letter A here on our manhole cover, and then we're gonna compare the uh, root mean square, the, the sort of uh, 3D average of those points to see how close they are grouped together. Um, so within, uh, let's see, we're gonna give this a title. All right, now let's go inside and crunch some numbers. Here we've rendered the seven points we took with tilt compensation enabled, and we visualized it so we can sort of see how these points fall together. Uh, in this case, we've drawn a three and a half centimeter radius circle to show you that the, the seven points fall relatively within that collection, uh, but we wanted to show it in 3D so that you can kind of see the, the elevations as well. So not all those points fall in the same plane, but they, they do fall kind of collectively within that three and a half, uh, 35 millimeter radius.